Hello, BookTube. Well, I wanted to continue with this uh, experimentation with new technology uh, and see if it continues to work. Uh, and I wanted today I want to do a, not a new book haul, but an old book haul <laughs> to sort of clear the decks. I have an old book haul, I want a bunch of books I want to show you and recommend to you. And I want to get them out of the way before a new, another old book haul, which is coming up <laughs> this, this weekend, is the Boston Public Library book sale uh, that's going to happen, even though it's going to happen in the middle of a blizzard. Uh, and I'm going, and uh, Chris Rhodes, right now, it looks like Chris Rhodes is joining me. It doesn't look like Giselle will be able to come with us because of this work thing you all talk about. Uh, it really sounds like more trouble than it's worth. Uh, but Chris will be here, uh, and I assume that we'll come back to Hyde Cottage and film a video of our book hauls. And I wanted to get these books out of the way before we do that. And also to ask, uh, Chris will be here, and he'll be filming. So if, there's a, if, if you'd like to do another Q&A, uh, feel free to go to his channel and bombard him with questions. Uh, you seem to have an insatiable curiosity for Q&As, even though I'm a boring old man who only reads, writes, and takes care of his old dogs. Uh, but he's the one who's going to have the handheld device, not me, so the question should go to him. <laughs> but in the meantime, uh, I will, I'm sure we'll, we'll think of other things to film, too. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you these books, which are not new. They're, they're old. I, they're products of charity shop hunts and the brattle and whatnot. Uh, but the first one is not old. The first one is new. I bought it at a bookstore. I couldn't resist. Uh, and I wanted to show it to you and recommend it to you comic fans. Uh, Marvel Comics uh, has been doing this collection of full-color paperback reprints called the Epic Collection uh, with odd, idiosyncratic, out-of-sequence numbering that I don't think anybody at Marvel really understands. I certainly don't understand it. And their latest one is a must-have for X-Men fans. It's, it's this. It's Second Genesis, the X-Men series that the, a big volume that collects the X-Men relaunch that happened with Chris Claremont and Dave Cockerman and then John Byrne, uh, where they took the old franchise of the X-Men, which had the, the comic had dwindled in readership and finally gone into sort of a reprint limbo, uh, and renewed it. They made new team members. They made a, a, a new dynamic of interpersonal squabbling and high stakes emotion and all that sort of thing. And they, they assured the powers that be at Marvel that, that it would work. And boy, did it ever. <laughs> Uh, and I, uh, they, Marvel has now reprinted everything, starting with Giant Size X-Men number one, where they reintroduced the team, all the way up to the very beginning of what X-Men fans consider to be the first landmark, which is the Dark Phoenix saga. So you don't get any hint of that in this. You get everything up until then. Uh, I don't know why Marvel went with this cover, a boring Marvel-style V lineup of superhero versus superhero, instead of the absolutely iconic cover to Giant Size X-Men number one. Why would you, by Gil Kane, why would you mess with that? Uh, but um, they did, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I love these epic collections because the color the color fidelity is usually really good. And I love these issues because they're, they, I didn't think it would work. When, it, when these issues first came out, I thought, well, I like the old team. What are you giving me a new team for? Uh, but uh, I was quickly won over. And it, it's a, a source of a little frustration when you read these issues because at one point, a supervillain actually says to Jean Grey, Marvel Girl, Phoenix, uh, that she, Scott Summers, Cyclops, and Professor X are the heart and soul of the X-Men, and that if you cut out the heart, the body dies. And despite being a supervillain, he was absolutely right. Uh, and yet, in the current Marvel continuity, Jean Grey is dead, Cyclops is dead, and Professor X is dead. <laughs> so, I don't know what argument you can make if you're an X-Men fan that that says that X, the X-Men themselves are not dead, if that's true. So uh, if any of you at Marvel are listening to the sound of my voice, as the Insomniac says, feel free to change that right away <laughs> and bring back Professor X, Jean Grey as Phoenix, and Cyclops. But anyway, well, then we go on to the, old, the older books, uh, and I... There's quite a variety to choose from here. The first one is, is natural history, evolutionary history. This is uh, Steve Jones, Almost Like a Whale. Uh, fantastic meditation on Darwin's origin of species and on the nature of evolution and the science behind it. Uh, and he starts off the book in the most arresting way possible. It, it, he addresses the fact that, that huge numbers of, of ignorant, science-denying people in the world don't believe that evolution even happens. They think the world was created overnight 6,000 years ago. And they don't care 
what that means. They don't care what that says about them or anything else. <laughs> they don't care about the facts either. They just want to believe that and tell people that it's never been proven that it's not true. Uh, and he starts off the book with sort of a, a direct declaration at those people, although he doesn't spend much time talking directly to them, uh, with an example of evolution by means of natural selection that has happened in our own lifetime, in real time, affecting millions of people. And of course, that's the AIDS virus, which is nothing like the virus that infected patient zero decades ago. And it's, it's nothing like the virus that killed thousands of men in New York you know, in the 80s and the early 90s, it's it's changed. It's evolved <laughs> over even that short a time, as viruses tend to do. Uh, and he goes into how and why the combination of environmental pressures and the, the efforts of science to eradicate it. It's, it's a wonderful, uh, a jarring, but a wonderful opening to a book about this science. And I, I can't recommend the book high enough. He's a fantastic writer. Uh, and then we move on to Project Penguin, which is technically finished because that back wall is now all penguins but we're going on anyway <laughs> the first one i was happy to find a perfect condition copy of kokoro by soseki that i a great novel that i didn't have in a penguin and and also uh dear old horatio alger uh the, the ragged dick and all of his other stories about uh you know scruffy boys making good <laughs> uh and then a bittersweet thing an unconventional novel told in verse with pictures uh, this is love, dishonor, marry, die, cherish, perish. Can you see that? I don't know. The, the words are inside the dots on the cover, which is which is artfully made. And the whole thing is like that. You get uh, verse and drawings. And it's by it's by uh, David Rakoff, and it's a it's a an amazing reading experience. It's really hard to summarize. It's joyful just joyful uh, except for the very last page which is not joyful <laughs> it's that and it has it's a picture of him smiling as always and it has the a subscript that even after all this time i just find it hard to believe uh november 2000 november 27 1964 august 9th 2012 that ought not to be true in a fair world. Uh, but it, we have this. It's a skinny thing, but it's powerful. Uh, you will like it, I bet. Uh, and then a book that's made the rounds on BookTube, and I read it and liked it when it first came out, but I didn't like it nearly as much as the rest of you did. So I thought I'd try it again, since it was free, and that's H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald. Her, her memoir of grief and natural history sort of patterned on T.H. White's book uh, along the same lines. And I, I thought, when I first read it, I thought it was a little bit gimmicky. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll definitely try it again, certainly. Uh, then a big fat biography, you knew big fat biographies are going to be in this, is Park Onan's biography of Christopher Marlowe. A nice, thick thing, full of intelligent speculation about Marlowe. Uh, probably the best Marlowe biography that I've ever read. Not the best Marlowe book. Uh, that would be Charles Nichols' book, The Reckoning. But that's mainly concerned with Marlowe's death and the men who caused it, rather than, uh, rather than Marlowe's whole life from beginning to end. Uh, so I highly recommend both, but I didn't find the, re the reckoning uh, during this used bookshop. Uh, then a big biography that I loved when I first read it. I don't know why I got rid of it. Most Famous Man in America. Uh, this, is, uh, this is by Debbie Applegate, and it's, by Hen it's about Henry Ward Beecher in an inimitable pose on the cover there. Uh, the brother of Harriet Beecher Stowe, the author of Uncle Tom's Cabin, and one of, one of the most charismatic preachers in America during his own time. His... his his, his speeches at his church drew crowds from all over the country. And he knew everybody, and he corresponded with everybody. And this book is, is just a delight to read. He's a delightful character to be in the middle of it. Uh, then we have uh, an, a treat, <laughs> an old thing. This is Thomas Bullfinch. This is The Legends of Charlemagne, uh, illustrated by N.C. Wyeth, which is it, just fantastic. An extra bonus. I have Bullfinch. Let me see if I can find you a picture. I have uh, the one volume Bullfinch in a couple of different editions here, but as I mentioned on this channel, yeah, there we go. There's a hippogriff. Look at that. I've mentioned on this channel a couple of times that I uh, one of the things you, I like about going to charity shops and the Brattle and used bookstores in general is uh, finding the perfect edition of something. Not just a good edition, but the thing you want. And this is definitely a case of that. Uh, and then a historical novel. Uh, this is uh, John Moringer's book, Sutton, about Willie Sutton, the bank robber. 
Uh, this is the paperback, and I when it first came out, I was skeptical because I'm not I'm not all really on board with the American uh, hero worship of of villains of criminals. I, I I know it's endemic to human to to American character. We've been doing it since the days of Billy the Kid, but I don't really like it. Uh, I I much prefer uh, to to something like. Breaking Bad or The Sopranos, where it's just blatant admiration. I much prefer something like Al Swearingen on Deadwood, where, yes, he's the most charismatic character in the show, but you're not supposed to like him, and you're not supposed to want to be like him. It's a combination of great writing and great acting by Ian McShane. You get you get something richer there, so, uh, sort of a response to the American love of criminals. <laughs> uh, but it turned out that I needn't have worried. This is actually a wonderful, wonderful book, which might account for the fact that I got a second copy. <laughs> this is also free, but I got it because the hardcover is so much nicer looking than the paperback. <laughs> and I figure since they're free, I might as well have both. I can certainly find a recipient for the paperback. Uh, and then a biographical study. Mm, one of my favorites. Every time I get a copy, I give it away, which is why I didn't have one. So I was happy to find it. It's Anthony Burgess's book on William Shakespeare, uh, which contains all of the biographical facts that we know about Shakespeare, but it also contains tons and tons of great riffs by Burgess on every aspect of Shakespearean life and lore. And it, a tremendous reading experience. I know that the books on Shakespeare could fill uh, an entire library at this point, but this is one to actually have. It's one that every one of those libraries should have. <laughs> so I was very happy to find it. Probably won't hold on to it long before I mail it out to somebody, but uh, in the meantime, <laughs> I was very happy to get it. And then a nice big biography, another big biography, something I loved when I first read and got rid of it. Now I have it back again, and I think the volume I have tells a story on its own, apart from the story of, of Nuriev, the dancer. That's This is the biography, this great big thing. Uh, but I have a feeling that I know the history of this book, and I think I know it because of the bookmark that was in it from the person who originally owned it. It is that, and it is not an American bookmark. <laughs> it is Russian, if you can see that there. Uh, and it's got the hammer and sickle of the of the Soviet Union. <laughs> uh, and you don't need to, to be all of, you don't need to be able to read the Russian, to, oh, I didn't anyway, to be able to recognize the painting, a famous Norwegian painter, a uh, painter of water, a great painter of water. Uh, um, Fritz Paolo is, is his name, and he, he uh, this is a corner in Venice, a painting of his, and uh, the reason why it's in this Nuriev book, I think, and the reason why the postcard is in Russian, is because this, I actually saw this painting in person. It's at the Pushkin Museum of Fine Arts in Moscow. A beautiful, graceful museum that, uh, that I have always preferred spending time in to the Hermitage. I, I strongly urge, if, you, if you're doing the museum thing in Russia, in Russia, I strongly urge you to go to the Pushkin because it's, it's an absolutely delightful experience. And they, they have a great collection, and this is there. The color is actually washed out on this old postcard, but the original is amazing. All of his originals are amazing. And I think uh, that that whoever bought this book bought it at the Pushkin Museum. Which, you know, it's a, like all gift shops and museums. There's a ton of gifts for English readers, for English language readers. I bet they bought this there with the postcard, used it as a bookmark, as I always do. And God knows how it ended up where I found it. And here it is. That that might not be true, that, but that's a story I'm investing in. <laughs> and then we'll we'll end for now with uh, another treat. <laughs> and we'll, we'll end with a graphic novel as we began, with a graphic novel only. This isn't some petty X-Men stuff. This is the real deal. <laughs> this is lasting impressions. It is a new and all new high school musical graphic novel. Uh... With our her our hero and heroine Troy Bolton and and, uh, and Gabrielle Montez, this is this is a new story of them told by uh, uh, with artwork by uh, now see the, the 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 credits only give the artwork as GG Studio uh, oh no Vincenzo Cocca who 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 has gone on to do other things bigger things. <laughs> A high school musical graphic novel. <laughs> you can't go wrong. <laughs> uh, and there you have it. That is a that is an old book haul uh, to keep testing this technology and also uh, to titillate you with recommendations. Uh, and uh, we'll move on from here to other things uh, in due time. But as you could probably hear in the video, 
a certain someone is up and needs to go out. <laughs> the every 20 minutes refrain of my life. <laughs> so I will go now, and I will be back. Thank you, BookTube.